Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do something that's very fun. We're going to paint a full painting without any cuts very quickly. So let's get started. I'm going to grab my palette and a two inch brush. And I've already sort of started mixing some color here before we begin. So I've got a nice soft gray. I'm going to place that right here somewhere. Now, let me explain the way I've kind of prepped the canvas. I've done something a little different. I've got our normal gel medium and white mix on top, but down here I just put clear, just a little bit of the clear medium instead of white, just because I don't want to muddy my colors. Now the reason I did that is because <laughs> we don't have a lot of time and it would be very, very slow for me to try to paint this normally. I normally paint, you know, grinding the paint into the canvas very little. Well, this time it's going to slide on. It's going to be a little bit more slippery. I don't care though, because I picked a painting that it wouldn't affect, wouldn't be affected by a little bit of an extra slippery canvas. It's going to be very misty and that's our mist there. All right, let me get a little more white, a little more color. This is just a little bit of gray. Here's some water. This gray is made out of black, white, a little blue, a little red to give it that purple cast. Button. There you go. A little darker, because I like dark at the bottom of my paintings. So there you go. We can choose to mess around with that a little more later. We'll just see. All right, we need a sky. <laughs> Here we go. A misty little soft stormy sky. Today there's very, very interesting lighting because the sun's hidden. It's gonna be like a, a storm that's sort of rolling in, or who knows, foggy, very misty. There. I just like it. I think it's gonna be really neat. And we don't do a whole lot that are like this. It's kind of fun. All right, black, blue, I'm gonna mix up this color again with you, just so you can see how it's done. <laughs> Plus I need a little more. All right. It's, oh, too purple, so I'm gonna throw a little brown, black into that, good. So what I'm doing now, I'm just using the big brush to sort of block in some of these big, big, massive tree areas. I'm going to scrub with the corner of the brush. You could do this with a filbert brush, but you can also do it with a two inch. It just depends on what kind of effect you're after and how much time you feel like putting into it. When you're at home, you sort of figure out what you want to do. I'm going to lay the color in by tapping, but I'm not going to leave it that way because that looks kind of rough. There. A little extra right here. I, I think I'm gonna put some brown into it just to change it, warm it up. <laughs> there, you see how slippery? I, I did add a little bit extra, extra medium on here than normal. I don't normally put this much paint down for the, for the obvious reason that we're not spending a whole lot of time today. It's been a very, very long time since we've done a painting like this together, so. I hope you enjoy it. You let me know if you want to see some more things like this, because I'm I'm happy just painting. So you let me know what you want to see, and we'll, we'll try to make that work. All right, let me set this down and grab something else. What do you think? Maybe a filbert brush? <laughs> we couldn't get away with painting trees without a filbert brush. You know, it's one of my favorites. I'm just going to sort of soften them. You see, it softens out very quickly. I'm softening those little hard areas. Don't want any specks on there, so I'm gonna grind those into the canvas. All right. Tell you what, let's paint in yellow, white, mostly white, touch of yellow. Maybe a little more yellow. Let's see what this does for us. Right here, I'm just gonna tap in. And a couple of little layers here, and I'm just going to kind of spin the brush in my fingers. That'll give me a better effect than just stamping it on like a rubber stamp. There we go. And maybe I want to color over here. Not much color, or you'll lose the effect of mist. Over here, something, but we might have some trees over there, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. This is how you make a beautiful misty background. Just a couple of brush strokes. There. Grab a, a two inch. Now, today it's more important than ever that we have tons of brushes going. 
In fact, I even have a couple extras beyond my normal set that I use when we paint together. So that way I'm, I don't have to, I don't have to use a brush that I don't want to. Something that's maybe too dirty for what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna step back and see if I like it really quick. Cause you guys have a better view than I do. You get to see my painting a little easier than I can. And if you've painted, you know exactly what I mean. Hard to see it when you're close up. There, I'm playing around in the background because the background is so fun. There. I'm gonna leave the brush strokes in there, the rest of them. All right, let's go ahead and just map out this painting. A little bit of our gray, a little white, and what do you think? Maybe right here? There. Okay, that's too dark. Too dark still. There we go. I just barely want to be able to see that. Get a little bit, there we go, perfect. And down here, I'm just gonna smudge a reflection. Very good. That's gonna go right off. And we can raise up a couple bushes, because obviously you don't want a hard line there. So that's like a distant little piece of land. And a dark, a dark line to separate. Always makes things a little nicer. Okay, let's do something else. Let's paint in, well, let's scrub this area in maybe. Let's just get that covered so we're done. Let's paint in some trees. So I got my darks and I'm gonna start out a little bit on the misty side, so let's see what this does for us. There's the base of the tree. Now let's go, let's go darker because I like the contrast. So you put on the canvas, you decide if you like it. If you don't, change it. Nobody's gonna care. Why worry about it? Okay, there's one. And maybe we got a, a secondary one right here. And this one's pretty huge, look at that. I like that big one there. I want to thicken this one up just because I like my trees thick sometimes. Okay, wipe that brush out. Let's reload it, bring it to a chisel, and whoop, here we go. <laughs> a big old limb that sticks out like that. And now because we don't have much lighting today, there's another one, we don't have to worry too much about where this tree would be highlighted because there's not really a great amount of highlight anywhere. There's no intense light or anything like that in this painting today, but it doesn't mean it's not somewhat lit. So we do need to figure out where the lighting's coming from. Maybe it's just slightly coming across like this. So wipe out that brush. I'm gonna pick up a filbert that's clean and I'm gonna run it along. <laughs> well, that didn't work too well, did it? I was thinking maybe I could lift off some of that paint, but it stained the canvas pretty good. So let's just mix up a little brown, white, let me show you what I'm doing. Brown, white, and gray. Oh, there we go. So if your first plan doesn't work out, just change to your next plan. Eventually something will work for you. That's what I do. It's just about experimenting. So don't feel bad if something doesn't work. Just say, well, that didn't work, and, and move on. Figure out a different way to get the same effect. When I looked at this tree, I thought, well, maybe I'll just sort of try to lift off some of the paint. There's a little little dead branch there but that didn't work so we just we just roll with it all right well anyways there there's a rough little highlight I want to get some beautiful beautiful little leaves out here red yellow black brown touch of our purple there we go and I'm just gonna smash them in because they're kind of distant leaves and I want them a bit misty just right here, maybe a bit up in here, like that. I'm saying I'm smashing them in with the edge of the brush there. And you can highlight them. Watch this. Get up a lot of beautiful color. Well, maybe that's a little bright. I'm gonna just dull that down a little. Get some color out on there. 
So you can highlight with this brush. I don't do it normally, but you can. It's very fast. There we go. Just spin it in your fingers there so that you get a, a variation in effect. You don't want the same old effect repeated over and over again because that's going to look weird. See that? I like those little yellows in there. Okay, we're going to throw a lot of branches in there that'll make that look more realistic. But for now, I'll tell you what, for now, let's go ahead and work on, let's work on a bit of a tree over here. And I'm going to kind of spin it in. <laughs> there we go. Man, when you paint fast, you got to have a, a sturdy little easel holding a canvas because you're slamming down a lot harder than normal to get it in there quickly. There we go. There. I like that, the little effect there. <laughs> that turned out nice. Fan brush. Watch this. There's old, some old grass and weeds and things growing right there. Blend that down, give it a bit of a pull. And that's like the weeds growing back there. Now to, to maybe make that even better, we can just lift up with a little bit of dark like that. See that add a bit of a, just an extra something there. Black, brown, green. A little white, because I don't want it quite that dark. There. Isn't this cool? And blend that down into the water and highlight yellow, green. And there you go. Just set that highlight right out on top there. Not too much vibrant color. Be sure you kind of mix it and make it a little muddy there. And then blend that down a little. You can even pull up little grass-like things in the water. Oh, that's neat. We're gonna, let's do that more later. That's cool. <laughs> All right, I gotta get moving here. Let's pick up a big brush. And this is where the medium's gonna come in handy here at the bottom. See how fast I can block things in? It's very slippery and highlighting is not overly controlled when you do it this way. So just understand that when you're, when you're painting, this is not necessarily the best way to do it depending on which scene you're painting. There. All right, let's see. I'm gonna bring that down just a little. And I do want a reflection, so I'm gonna pull down and go across. You know how to paint reflections, They're pretty easy. And I wanna bring that up, I don't want just a, I don't want a square. See, when you use a long brush, sometimes you get squares. Actually, here's one that I don't like as well. I don't want any squares. So make sure you kind of mess up those edges a bit. Much better. See, that look, looks a little more natural. It's not just like chopped off straight. All right, the fan brush is a lot of fun. So let's go back to it and get us a little bit of yellow and brown. Watch this. Let's just tap in. <laughs> tap in some grass. Dark grass. Nothing too crazy today. I like those tall ones like that. You make those just by slamming down with the brush. Don't bend it, slam it down. Slam it down like that. It just makes a great little effect. Let's do some over here. You get the tall grass look very, very easily. It's not difficult. After you practice and learn that stroke, it just comes right off very easily. One of my favorite grass strokes right here. And then of course you gotta, gotta have a reflection. Painting's never complete without a beautiful little reflection. All right, yellow, green. Remember, I said we liked this, so. There we go. Pull that down. And don't worry, we're gonna add different colors. Gotta just, gotta start somewhere, you know. All right. I need a dark here. Gotta have a dark there. Gotta have some sort of contrast in this one. And then I want a dark under here. And then a dark in the reflection. 
They seem slowing down just a bit to make sure I kind of got this the way I like it. Blend over that and creating a little bit of a ripple there in the water just by blending like this. See those dark lines create the ripples and the shadows in the water? I like that. I'm gonna gently do that back here as well. There, let me maybe blur that just a bit. Nice. That just sort of adds a little bit of movement to the water there. Now, of course, I mess this area up. I'm gonna come back and just whoop, fill it back in. Okay, tell you what, let's sort of, let's sort of work on some misty areas maybe. White, one inch brush. And these trees need to float in the mist a little more than they are. See how they just sort of lose them back there? That's cool. That's really cool, I like that. That's fun. I wasn't sure how we were gonna plant those trees, but there you go. Well, let's make that a misty bush, because why not? Look at that. Man, that's cool. A little more. I want that mist to be sort of floating, and then that brown in there, that makes it look like grass that's so misty you can't tell what's going on. Tell you what, you think we need maybe a bit of a stump here. Ready for this. <laughs> it's gonna be a crazy looking stump. There we go. Crazy enough for you? Look at that. That tree must have been pretty interesting looking when it was alive, right? With all that detail. All those bumps and maybe an arm or a limb there. It's not a cactus, so this would be a limb. There. All right. Get us a little a bit of a light color, and I just want to run that light right along. And if you had a little more time than I'm choosing to spend on my painting today, you could certainly add even more colors. I'm going to try to do this with you. Just let me show you what I'm doing. I'm mixing up a bit of a purple because I think a purple would be so pretty on here. There you go. That helps to tie it in with the painting a bit. There we go. Tell you what, do a couple of bit, a couple of rocks in here maybe. And so we could do some rocks like this. They're pretty subtle because it's so foggy, we don't want a, a whole bunch of detail. Okay, and then a bit of a reflection under each rock is always good. Kind of a, a rocky shore there. All right, now we need some, oh, we need some highlight on that one over there. There you go, just a bit, because remember the light's sort of coming across, but this could catch a bit. Not much, just here and there, and that's probably enough. I want some, I want some liner brush work before we quit. Liner brush, some, well, let's go for some dark paint first, just because we can. And let's bring up some of these dark grasses because this is going to give us some contrast. There we go. <laughs> there we go. This is fun. I like this liner brush that goes forever. And the harder you press down, the larger the grass blades are going to be. I'm going to thin this paint down just a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw in couple of beautiful little limbs. Doesn't make any difference if they all connect perfectly. That's not the point. The point is that you get this contrast and this detail out here. And perhaps this is a tree or something that's sort of in front of this background one. That's why it's darker and we can see all of the limbs. There. And it's very tempting to say, well, my painting's finished. No. No. Spend a couple extra minutes and put these details in because it's worth it. There we go. So if you're busy during the season, you can still cut out some time to paint. We can all do one very quickly if you want to, and it's still fun. You get a lot of practice out of doing them this quick. You will not get the same exact quality of art because it just takes time. But you could sure have a lot of fun and you can learn so much doing it. Just uh, say, I have 20 minutes. I'm going to sit down and do a quick painting. <laughs> I think this one will be just about 20 minutes. Not too much longer. 
All right, what do you think? Maybe a couple limbs on this guy. And certainly some tree limbs over here would help. This is where you sort of could take all day, but that we're not going to. If you get a big bubble there of paint, just make a new limb out of that. That works out pretty well. There we go. Reload. If your paint doesn't flow for you, then you just add a little extra thinner to it. Nice. And I don't want to go crazy over here because this is a little bit misty still. And of course you can do a couple of little guys that stick up. Any of this action over here that sticks up over the, the mist creates beautiful contrast that you just, you just would love in your painting. So nice. All right, pull up some grasses and over here, I know I'm taking a little bit of time on these, but I think it's worth it to get a couple of these beautiful grass blades out here because this is what makes the painting in my mind. A couple of them right here. Now we do need to reflect them loosely very quickly in the water. Very quickly. If you go crazy with the reflections, you'll be here all day and it probably wouldn't look that great anyways if you have it all perfect. So anyways, as we're sort of wrapping it up, ooh, <laughs> don't let me forget that. Wouldn't that be funny? We need a bit of a reflection for this tree stump. Not perfect, but just a bit of color where we would have it there. <laughs> that would be sad if I missed that. All right, that's looking pretty good. A couple more limbs or I'm sorry, grass blades over here. Just sort of round it all off, finish it up. And I think we're gonna be, I think we're being done with our video. That was fast. Well, I hope you had a lot of fun. Let me know if you want me to do some more of these. And thanks so much for watching.